I'm McKenna, I'm the Summer Reading Club Coordinator, and today we have another story time, and this week the story time theme is the Olympics, because the Olympics are happening from July 23rd until August 8th, so I thought it would be fun to do an Olympic themed story time and make it a story time where we're very active and jumping around and having a ton of fun. So I suggest that for this story time you're in a space where you can be active and hopefully we'll have some fun together. So first we'll start with a hello song. It's the same one that we've done uh, I think a few times now and it's called Hello Everybody Can You Touch Your Toes and it goes like this. Well hello everybody can you touch your nose, touch your nose, touch your nose. Well hello everybody can you touch your nose, touch your nose. Let's do our toes next. Well hello everybody can you touch your toes. Touch your toes, touch your toes. Well, hello, everybody. Can you touch your toes? Touch your toes. And we'll do our head. Well, hello, everybody. Can you pat your head? Pat your head, pat your head. Well, hello, everybody. Can you pat your head? Pat your head. Okay. So our next song is called Walking, Walking, and it's an action song again. And I will sing the first verse together and then we'll go through it. So it goes like this. Walking, 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 walking. Hop, 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 hop. Running, 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 running. Now we stop, now we stop. Okay, we'll do that again and we'll do it a few times over with some different actions. Walking, 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 walking. Hop, hop, hop. Hop, 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 running, 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 running. Now we stop, now we stop. Tip, toe, tip, toe, tip, toe, tip, toe. Hop, 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 hop. Running, 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 running. Now we stop, now we stop. Let's do marching. Marching, 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 marching. Uh, I forgot the lyrics. Oh, hop, 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 hop. Running, 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 running. Now we stop, now we stop. Oh, so our first book is called Queers George and the Summer Games by Margaret and H.A. Rays and published by Houghton Mifflin Horcourt, Horcourt Books. And I thought it was a good book because we are about to enter our summer games or the Summer Olympics. Curious George and the Summer Games. George was a little monkey who was good at a lot of things, especially being curious. What was all that commotion in the field near his home? The man with the yellow hat told George, that's the recreation center staff setting up the summer field day event. Any kid in town uh, can compete in sports like volleyball or track and field. Each event has a prize, a medal. George wanted a medal. He ran onto the field. His, friends quickly his friend quickly followed. Come on and join us, George. We're practicing for the competition next week. George's neighborhood friends were lined up in front of some strange looking structures. They look like huge staples. A kid named Lorenzo started running and as soon as he reached the first medal bar, he leaped over it. Then he jumped over another and another. You want to try the hurdles, the man asked George. The little monkey nodded eagerly. The hurdles were too high to leap over. George still had fun, but this was not the sport for him. George was curious about many different sports. Next, he tried the long jump in badminton. Both sports were harder than he thought they would be. Many of the kids had been practicing, had been practicing in them for months. They were hard to beat. Playing sports is about being fit and healthy, George, the man explained, and having fun. It's not just about winning. This made George feel better, and since the summer games were happening the next weekend, George had the rest of the week to practice. So he did, every day. The next day, George joined a volleyball team. He was good at diving for the ball. Go, George, his teammates shouted. But instead of returning the ball over the net with one bump, George grabbed it and ran. Uh-oh. George would need to learn so many rules about this game before he could play the right way. On Wednesday, George returned to the field. He was curious about the relay race. He saw kids take turns running with a baton around a large oval track. It didn't look too hard. George was assigned the anchor leg, which meant he, could, he would run fast. 
sorry, he would run last. He, but he didn't understand he could only take the baton from his teammate. He took the first baton that came close from another team. The track coach steered the little monkey in the direction of the gymnastics area. George tried to balance the balance beam first. He was naturally good at keeping his balance without wobbling. He could swing on the rings without getting tired, and he was so fast on the pommel horse, he got an applause. He had found his sport. George spent two more days practicing his skills with the other gymnasts on the West Street Wonder Team. Stella, one of the younger members, showed him how to pirouette on the balance beam. I bet you're as excited as I am, she said to George. It's my first competition, too. Finally, the summer games arrived. Gymnasts, gymnastics was up first. George enjoyed cheering on his teammates, even though he did sometimes forget he shouldn't be doing cartwheels on the sidelines and distracting the audience. But look, oh no, Stella hadn't started her routine. She was nervous that there were so many faces watching from the stands. George had heard someone say Stella had stage fright. He knew what he had to do. Before anyone could tell him it was against the rules, he climbed onto the beam and did a handstand. Stella smiled at him. George then held out a hand. Stella reached her arms out and bowed. Then she did a perfect pirouette. George mirrored her. As long as Stella kept her eyes on George, she didn't feel nervous. She finished her routine to grand applause. There wasn't a medal for double gymnastic, doubles gymnastics, but there were ribbons for team effort. That was just fine with George. Making new friends and learning a sport had been the best part of the summer games. Besides, there was always next year. So, I have another... Uh, action song for us and we did it a few weeks ago and it's called we wiggle and wiggle and stop and so it goes like this we wiggle and wiggle and stop we wiggle and wiggle and stop we wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and stop we twirl and we twirl and we stop we twirl and we twirl and we stop we twirl and 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 we stop we clap and we clap and we clap we clap and we clap and we clap we clap and we clap and we clap and we clap, we clap and we clap and we stop. We jump and we jump and we stop. We jump and we jump and we stop. We jump and we jump, we jump and we jump, we jump and we jump and we stop. Okay, last one. We wave and we wave and we stop. We wave and we wave and we stop. We wave and we wave, we wave and we wave, we wave and we wave and we stop. Okay, that was a tiring song. Our next book is called Max and Marla by Alexandra Boyger, and it's been published by G.P. Putman's Sons book, Books. And it's a winter-based book, and it's not necessarily related directly to the Olympics, but it's about the attitude that Olympians have. So it's called Max and Marla. And this is a whole series, the Max and Marla books. This is just one of them. Max and Marla. Max and Marla are best friends. They are Olympians, real life, honest to goodness, cross your heart, Winter Olympics Olympians. Wait, you don't believe me? Just watch. Preparation is key, and these two are very good at preparing. Ready, Marla? asks Max. Here we come. Told you they are true Olympians. Ready, set, go. We are not going anywhere, Marla. Oh boy, our Olympians face technical difficulties. We must tend to this immediately. True Olympians never give up. Marla and Max get to it right away. Taking care of your equipment takes time and it is very important, as is teamwork. Marla, could you hand me the wax, please? Marla, do you see, see she's sleeping? Tomorrow will be a new day. Today, the team has added a number of improvements to their routine. The equipment double checked. Max, okay. Max, okay. Marla, thumbs up. Here we come. Just look at them. They are fearless, prepared for the unexpected. True Olympians never give up. Marla, we must take a sick day, says Max. Taking care of yourself is important, probably most important of all. 
The two athletes are fully recovered. Look, Marla, says Max, this time we are going to prepare for absolutely everything. Any wind today? No. Perfect weather conditions. Preparation really is the key. Oh, we got caught in the snow. Obstacles are turned into victories. Max and Marla are true Olympians. And there they are giving each other medals. So our next action song is called My Two Hands and it goes like this. My two hands go clap, clap, clap. My two feet go tap, tap, tap. My two hands go thump, thump, thump. My two feet go jump, jump, jump. My one body turns around and it quietly sits down. Okay, we'll do that one more time. My two hands go clap, clap, clap. My two feet go tap, tap, tap. My two hands go thump, thump, thump. My two feet go jump, jump, jump. My one body turns around and it quietly sits down. Okay, we have another action song. I think we did this last week or the week before. I really like it. It's called My Right Foot Has the Wiggles and it goes like this. My right foot has the wiggles. My right foot has the wiggles. My right foot has the wiggles and I tell it to stop. I'm trying to sit here nicely. I'm trying to sit here nicely. I'm trying to sit here nicely, but my left foot wants to bop. My left foot has the wiggles. My left foot has the wiggles. My left foot has the wiggles and I tell it to stop. I'm trying to sit here nicely. I'm trying to sit here nicely. I'm trying to sit here nicely, but my right hand wants to bop. My right hand has the wiggles. My right hand has the wiggles. My right hand has the wiggles and I tell it to stop. I'm trying to sit here nicely. I'm trying to sit here nicely. I'm trying to sit here nicely, but my left hand wants to bop. My left hand has the wiggles. My left hand has the wiggles. My left hand has the wiggles and I tell it to stop. I don't know if there's any other body parts you could wiggle, maybe your head, but you could keep going if you wanted to with this song. Get yourself nice and active and silly. Our last storybook for today is called Lucas at the Paralympics by Igor uh, Fole, illustrated by Erska Stropnik Sonk and published by uh, Holiday House Books. So this is all about the Paralympics and it says in it, every four years, athletes with physical disabilities demonstrate superhuman abilities in the Paralympics. Join Lucas and Eddie as they attend the Summer Paralympic Games and learn about paraswimming, wheelchair basketball, goal ball and more. And I believe that the Paralympics this year are happening right after the Summer Olympics. This is Lucas. One day he fell from a ladder and injured his spine. Lucas hasn't been able to use his legs since then. He uses a wheelchair to move around. Lucas loves sports. Lucas has a special hand powered cycle that he rides every day. He likes to go fast. One day Lucas saw someone on a cycle just like his and he was going even faster. Lucas tried with all of his might to catch up. Hello, said Lucas. Hello, said the other cyclist. The other cyclist was named Eddie. Eddie and Lucas decided to cycle together every day. Soon they were friends. Eddie told Lucas about the Paralympic Games, games that are held every four years. The best athletes, all with disabilities from all over the world, compete for bronze, silver, and gold medals. And there's some information down here. I won't read all of them, but this one says the name Paralympic is made of two parts. Para comes from the Greek word meaning parallel or alongside and Olympic refers to the ancient Greek town in Olympia where the first Olympic games were held. Two years later, Lucas and Eddie took a plane and flew halfway around the world to the summer Paralympics. Thousands of athletes from more than a hundred countries arrived to compete in more than 20 sports. And down here, it just explains some of the Paralympic sports. Thousands of spectators, both in the stands and in front of television sets at home, cheered for runners racing on the track. Some of the runners wore a prothesis. 
A prosthesis is a medical aid that is used to replace a missing body part. Paralympic runners use a prosthesis uh, that are made spe specially for each athlete's unique running style. And you can see them here. Blind runners race too. Some could see a little and some couldn't see at all. So every runner wore a blindfold for fairness. Each blind athlete ran with a guide, a leather rope called a, te a tether connected to them. Blind athletes played goal, goal ball too. Lucas had never seen a goal ball competition before and it was so exciting. The athletes were fully or partially blind and all wore blindfolds for fairness as the blind runners did. Three players on each side tried to throw a ball into the opponent's goal. Defenders used their whole bodies to protect their goal. The ball had bells in it so the players could hear where it was. The spectators had to be quiet so the players could hear the bells. Eddie's friend Jake was in, was in a pair of swimming race. Go Jake, Eddie shouted. You can do it, Lucas called out. Jake was very fast, but not fast enough to win a medal. He was very disappointed. Lucas and Eddie tried to cheer Jake up. Jake thanked them for their support, but he didn't feel like talking. He knew he would feel better tomorrow. In the, in, in the days to come, he'd be happily training for his next competition. But for now, he just wanted to be alone. Lucas and Eddie respected his wishes and watched him go back to the changing room. The next day, Lucas and Eddie watched the athletes compete in sitting volleyball, wheelchair rugby, bocha, and para archery. So there's some of the sports. Wheelchair basketball, where the hoop is the same height as in the Olympic Games, was very exciting. Players passed and shot the ball and went very fast. When they crashed into to the ground, they picked themselves up without any help. Luckily, the athletes were strapped into their wheelchair. Wheelchair table tennis looked very difficult. The athletes needed to control their wheelchair with one hand and the paddle with the other. Wheelchair fencers wore suits and masks that electronically detected when a sword touched them, their wheelchairs were attached to the ground. On the last day of the Paralympic Games, Lucas and Eddie went to party with the athletes and their coaches. At the party, Lucas talked to an athlete who was going to be competing in para cross country skiing at the next Winter Paralympics. And this one says, the first Winter Paralympic Games were held in 1976 in Sweden. These were also the first Paralympics where athletes other than wheelchair athletes competed. When Lucas returned home, he decided to practice for the Paralympic Games that would take place in four years. Even if he didn't qualify, he would have a lot of fun trying. And then it also talks about the Winter Paralympics. So it says the winter sports includes para-alpine -alp skiing, para-cross-country ski skiing, para-ice hockey, para-snowboarding, and wheelchair curling. And the author, it says Igor F um, Fowl was born and raised in Slovenia where he teaches at a primary school and lectures extensively on physical disability and spinal cord injury. After falling from a ladder at the age of 29, he injured his spinal cord and became paraplegic. He shares his experience in an autobiographical book for adults and in three children's books, including this one. You can learn more about his story um, at his website, which is listed in the book. So that's all for our Olympic theme story time today. And if you would like to pick up Olympic themed crafts, we'll begin having some available at the library in the coming days. So you can keep an eye out for that, as well as a collection of Olympic themed books that you can pick up, including the three that I read with you today. So before we leave, of course, we'll end off with our goodbye song. So it's the same as always as our hello song, but you just replace hello with goodbye. So goodbye, everybody. Can you touch your nose? Touch your nose. Touch your nose. Well, goodbye, everybody. Can you touch your nose? Touch your nose. Well, goodbye, everybody. Can you touch your toes? Touch your toes. Touch your toes. Well, goodbye, everybody. Can you touch your toes? Touch your toes. Well, goodbye, everybody. Can you pat your head? Pat your head. Pat your head. Well, goodbye, everybody. Could you pat your head? Pat your head. Goodbye, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed today's story time, and I'll see you next week. Bye.